Welcome to the Masculine Public Libraries. Don't let the pigeon miss this party. I'm Mrs. Klein, otherwise known as Laura the Library Lady. And we are going to get started here by making our pigeon headband hat. So if you get out your bag with the circles and your long strip, first thing you're going to do is take your big circle and that's going to be the pigeon's head. So you need a glue stick or some glue or tape. And you're going to glue the eyeball to the blue circle, kind of off center. So find your eyeball. <clears throat> We're waiting on our glue stick. Okay. <laughs> Uh oh, somebody's there. All right, I'm going to glue my eyeball. So I put my glue on and I'm going to stick it on kind of off center. And then after that, you want to find the black circle, the pupil. And you're going to glue that also off center, kind of toward the edge. See how mine is? Yep. The pigeon's kind of looking forward. That's hey. your beak. Maybe we should make a beak. You're going to make your own beak. There's a big piece of cardstock in your uh, rest of your packet that's eight and a half by 11. And we're going to be cutting different things out of that. So you can actually take the corner of that and make just okay. what look like two little kind of little lips, kind of like two little bananas. And then when you're done with that, I didn't make one on him. You're going to take your neck and there if there's a line on it there might be a pencil line you can just glue within the pencil line and stick it so hold it up so it kind of looks like you know the pigeon's looking forward and then my glue on here i'm going to stick back behind his head Ooh, looks like you're doing a good job. And then you want to find the little white rectangle, and that's this ring around his neck, kind of collar. Pigeon has. Yeah, and that's just going to kind of stick on there wherever you want on his neck. Okay, then you want to take your long strip. Yours is either yellow or white. I don't know which one you have. And put the neck back behind. So it's kind of on the inside of what's going to be your hat. Okay. I ended up using a popsicle stick to kind of shore it up. So you could do that later or kind of stick some more tape on there later if it doesn't want to stay. After you do that, let's see, I'm going to be too tall for my pigeon hat. <laughs> and you just put it around your head and glue it or tape it, or even you can even staple it in place depending on how big your head is. And I've got a clip in my hair, so I have to do it underneath the clip. Uh oh, we need a better glue stick. The pigeon head fell off. Uh oh. You know, the pigeon, his neck might be flimsy. Yeah. We'll try to pop it. 
All right, so while you're finishing working on that, I just have a really short video by the author of the Pigeon Books, Mo Willems, and you might know him from also writing Elephant and Piggy books and Knuckle Bunny, Wilbur the Naked Mole Rat, all kinds of cool characters besides Pigeon. And so I'm going to play that short video for you while you're finishing your head ram. Oh, I gotta share my screen. Sorry. And welcome to Mo Food with Mo Willems. That's me, I'm Mo. Today we've got a very special dish. It's based on a new elephant and piggy book called I Really Like Slop. So today I'm gonna make some of Piggy's patented, super disgusting, extra yucky slop. So you ready? Okay, everybody, don't do this with me. It's very dangerous. All right, here we go. We got a big pot for a slop. As you see, there are all these really delicious vegetables and really healthy food here. First thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna get rid of them because we're making slop, right? And you don't want anything healthy in there. So we'll just get rid of this as well. But instead, let's start with a beautiful shoe. But you wanna make sure that it has hints of stinky. Marbles, just in case you lose thing of metal, another thing of metal, another thing of metal, a little salt, a little pepper, tomatoes, some steel wool. This comes from a real steel sheep. Bad milk. This is milk that doesn't share very well. Pick a card, any card. Is this your card? 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 Is card? Maybe that's your card. Is this your card? Is this your card? Is this your card? Is that your card? You always need a skate. Oh, a stinky, stinky book. And here is some old cream cheese. Perfect. And rock. Okay, we're gonna start a little bit. Start. And then wait seven days. Okay, I think we're ready. Shall we give it a taste? Mm. Just the right aroma. Ready? No! I don't love! Oh, no! Oh, I got nothing! Oh, I got no! It's delicious. No! 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 I got no! All right, let's see who wants some. There's a frog in my slop. I really like slop. Bye, Bye Mom! Yeah. Mm, it looks artisanal. All right, well, that was a silly one, huh? Okay. We are going to. This Maybe. unforgettable Oops. vacation Sorry. memory. Go back. It's all right. Okay. We're going to read a little excerpt in case you're not familiar with Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus by Mo Williams. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm the bus driver. Listen, I've got to leave for a little while, so can you watch things for me until I get back? Thanks. And oh, and remember, don't let the pigeon drive the bus. I thought he'd never leave. Hey, can I drive the bus? Please, I'll be careful. 
No, I never get to do anything. Oh, he looks so sad. I'll be your best friend. How about I give you five bucks? No fair. I bet your mom would let me. What's the big deal? It's just a bus. I have dreams, you know. Fine. I'm back. You didn't let him drive the bus, did you? No. Great. Thanks a lot. The pigeon says, uh-oh, because here comes the bus driver, right? Bye. Oh, how's he look? Oh, so sad. Hey. What does he see? Can you tell what that is? Fire truck. You think he's going to try to drive the fire truck next? Or the big semi truck? Mm -hmm. I think it's a fire truck, although in this other picture, they're kind of showing it to be a semi truck. But I think mm -hmm. the pigeons should try to drive a fire truck. All right, so that's my excerpt from Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. And then um, if you want to get back into your little plastic baggie, there is a manners game, manners matter matching game. And since it's only you and me, I don't know how much fun we're going to have with it, but this is kind of from the uh, Duckling. Duckling gets a cookie book, and there was an event kit that went with it, so it was really cool that I got to print out all these things. And so I am going to read a card, and then I want you to find a card that goes with it what you should do if this happens. So I'm going to read the one that's something that happens, and then you're going to find the one that's what you should say if that something happens. Okay. So, okay, I picked someone sneezes. So now can you find a card that is what you should say if someone sneezes? you all right how about if you sneeze what do you think you say and some of them could be used for more than one um okay you sneezed and you said excuse me all right what if someone thanks you You are welcome. Very nice. How about you are introduced to a new person? That would work for what you wanted to say. Nice to meet you. Okay. Now here, this is my favorite. What if someone bakes you cookies? You eat them all. <laughs> But then what do you say? <laughs> Thank you. That says excuse me. That says Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Okay, what if you ask for something? You are asking somebody for something. What's the magic word? That's what my grandma always used to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. I read your lips. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. You are a polite person. What happens if you accidentally bump into someone? What should you say? You can say a couple different things. You could say this too. You know what that says? It says sorry. So if you told both of those are trouble. Oh, sorry and excuse me. Very nice. Okay, how about pardon me? That means the same as excuse me also. Pardon me. Those are good ones. Uh oh, okay. This one's kind of similar. What if you hurt someone?
Remember, some of the answers could be the same. Sorry, very good. And what if something is given to you? Good job. Remember. Thank you. Okay. Well, you got a perfect score on that. You are perfectly polite. Awesome. All right, next we're going to go to your let's draw the pigeon sheet. And I got a new marker. Look how huge it is. Here's this. Gonna draw a pigeon. Can you use your pencil, your red pencil? Oh, I can't even hardly open my marker. It's so new. Oh. Okay, so number one on our sheet says we're going to start with a big letter O, kind of an oval, and it appears in words like Mo, and you can tell that the author Mo Willems is the one who wrote this because, you know, he's going to mention his own name. So we're going to draw a big O. Okay, now we're going to draw a smaller O inside of it. And now, number three, you have a choice between two letters, M or W, but you have to draw it on its side. I'm gonna draw an M. And guess what, you drew a beak. Okay, we're gonna place the eye next, and that's the most important part of the drawing because the eye shows how the character is feeling. And so you wanna make sure to darken it in. So you're gonna draw the eye. And then you're gonna draw two lines going down for the neck. And then two straight lines going across for the collar and he kind of just draws them kind of like that. Doesn't matter if they're in the lines or not. Okay, so then we're on to number seven. The body is kind of a half circle. It's a, he's calling it a circ angle, a triangle and a circle combined. And it kind of looks like he's saying an ice cream cone that fell over, but I think it kind of looks like a bird wing. So I'm gonna kind of draw my thing that looks like a bird wing like that. And then after you get your body and you're just gonna draw the legs and those are just two more lines, just like we did the neck, you're just gonna draw two lines. Almost done. You're gonna draw the letter V three times. So the first two are upside down for the feet and you're gonna go across the bottom of the leg, V, V, to kind of make his feet. And then you're gonna do a sideways V for the wing. And that's it. And that's the pigeon. Woohoo. Can I see your pigeon? Ooh, cute. Ooh, he's looking up. I like it. Nice. Your feet are better than mine. My feet didn't turn out very well. Okay. You can right. Ever read Knuffle Bunny? but that's one of Mo Willems' books and it actually won a Caldecott Honor Award. And that's an award they give out to an illustrator every year. And it's got some really cool illustrations. It's got real pictures and then it's got cartoons on top. And so kind of like this one, I gave you a picture of a real building, which is the library. And then I gave you that cardstock to draw some of your own cartoon people. So you want to get out your piece of card stock and kind of look at your library and see where and who maybe you want to draw you and your mom and dad going to the library or somebody like that. And so the way that the way that he does his illustrations is he usually does like a black outline. I don't know if you can see that black outline. So I did mine with a black marker and then I colored it in. Let's see. 
Yeah, that's what this will be here for. So black might be nice. It doesn't have to be real big because it's just going to go, you know, on part of the picture. So I drew me and my grandkids. Oh, look, that's that. Okay. So I'm going to glue it on when I'm done, but I just drew black outlines and then I colored in. This is my grandson, Arthur. He's wearing his favorite orange hat. This is my granddaughter, Penelope, and she has red hair. Thank you. Like See my name tag? I'm not wearing my name tag for real today, but they're fine. Good job. Thank you. So, yep, I just drew them with black and then I colored them in and cut them out. And I liked cutting them out pretty close to all the details because that's how he does it even though it was kind of hard and it took me a little while, like how he cut out every little bit and went around. I'm gonna glue mine on. Okay, so I glued mine on, and there we are going to the library. And it looks like a Mo Willems drawing, kind of, <laughs> not as good. That's good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I'm going to read a little bit from Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed just while you're busy coloring. And the introduction says, Wilbur is different from the other naked mole rats in the colony. He wears clothes and he likes it. But what will happen when grandpa, the oldest, wisest, and most naked naked mole rat ever discovers Wilbur's secret? So naked mole rat gets stressed. There is so much to learn about the fascinating little creatures known as naked mole rats. But for this story, you only need to know three things. Number one, they are a little bit rat. Number two, they are a little bit mole. Number three, they are all naked. Well, they were with one exception. Wilbur, the naked mole rat who liked to get dressed. Hello. When the other naked mole rats saw him, they said, ew, yuck, what are you doing? I like clothes, replied Wilbur. When I get dressed, I can be fancy or funny or cool, or I could just be an astronaut. When the others heard that, they said, ew, yuck. If you like clothes so much, then why don't you open a store or something? Naked mole rats can be very sarcastic. But Wilbur thought that was a great idea. And here's a clothing store that says, fun, warmer, try it, sale. The other naked mole rats did not. They brought Wilbur to a giant portrait of Grandpa, the oldest, greatest, and most naked naked mole rat ever. Look at that picture, they demanded. Look at his heroic face. Look at his regal bearing. Look at his total lack of clothing. Grandpa did look heroic. Grandpa did look regal. But he would also look heroic and regal in a casual shirt and some summer slacks. Ugh, said the other naked mole rats. Don't you get it? Naked mole rats don't wear clothes. Why not? asked Wilbur. Something had to be done. Oh, look, they're all angry. Yeah. Naked mole rats marched right over to Grandpa and told him all about Wilbur. And then he asked, why not? Grandpa was very wise. Hmm. He thought seriously about everything he had heard. Ah. Then he thought some more. Hmm. Finally, he said in a heroic, regal voice, gather the colony, I shall make a proclamation. When Wilbur heard about Grandpa's proclamation, he knew it was serious. A proclamation, a proclamation, a proclamation. But he had no idea what to wear. In the end, Wilbur decided to play it safe. Ugh, he left everything behind except for the socks. 
maybe not safe enough. Hmm, look, they're all looking at him. The others were so busy looking at Wilbur's socks that nobody noticed Grandpa enter until he cleared his throat and proclaimed, <clears throat> fellow naked mole rats, I had never worn clothes until I heard Wilbur's simple question. Why not? Why not indeed? Do clothes hurt anyone? No. Are they fun? Well, they may not be for everyone, but this old naked mole rat wishes he had tried getting dressed earlier. Then Grandpa complimented Wilbur on his socks. As fast as his legs could take him, Wilbur rushed home, put on his favorite outfit, and dashed back. Where's his favorite outfit? Look how fancy Grandpa was. When he returned, Wilbur discovered he was not alone. Much has been said about that day, but for this story, you only need to know three things. Number one, some of the mole rats were naked. Number two, some of the mole rats were clothed. Number three, all of the mole rats had a great time. No exceptions. And there's his clothing store. The end. And it does, it says, why not? Right again. So if you're still drawing, I wanted to see if while you're drawing, you can give me some words. We're gonna do the elephant and piggy Mad Libs. So I need seven nouns and nouns are a person, a place or a thing. So see if you can think up seven words for me. A person, a place, an animal, a thing. A horse. Oh, a horse, okay. Can you think of them? A house. A house. Very good. Card. Card. Paper. Paper. Good. That's four. We need three more. Picture. Okay. Clock. Clock. One more. Book. I like that one. Okay, now we need six verbs, and verbs are action words about doing something. So, like, what are you doing right now? Knees, go, coloring, color. Okay. I'm going to put sneeze. How about that? Okay. <laughs> Maggie Park. Oh. about run. Bark. Bark, okay, that's a good one. Two more. Jump. Oh yeah. How about, did you think of one? Mm -hmm. All right, so now I'm going to tell the story that's on the Mad Lib sheet with your words in it. So, one day, Gerald and Piggy decided to go on a horse. Piggy, we will need to gather many things. Gerald and Piggy began to color. Will we sneeze? Asked Piggy. Of course, Gerald said. So, we will need to pack a house. Piggy ran home to try to find a car to take with them. Gerald barked in his closet to get a picture in case it rained. I think we might need paper so we don't get too hungry, Piggy said when she returned. They made sure to pack a clock to munch on. I really hope we get to jump in the ocean when we get there, Piggy said. So Gerald and Piggy jumped in their clock and left. What should we do after this, Gerald said. Maybe we could try to eat. Piggy said. <laughs> that was a silly story, huh? That'd be a good one you could do with sisters too. You guys could make up different words and put them on a separate piece of paper and then write them in. Are you still working? She's coloring the uh, mm -hmm. mole rat 
sheet. Oh, okay, great. I was going to talk about that next. Yeah, there's the naked mole rat with some clothes, kind of like a little paper doll. Thing. Yeah, she's been working yeah. on that the whole time. Okay, and you can cut them out and all that good stuff. Very good. Don't forget to make your people for the library because I want to see it. <laughs> she didn't do those yet. Didn't do those. Okay. Well, I just want to show you that, you know, in your pack, you've also got your official certificate of not letting the pigeon drive the bus. So I think you should definitely fill that out with your name and put the date and everything. It because of your steadfast refusal to give in to said pigeon, even in the face of whining, needling, and frankly, passive aggressive behavior. You're an inspiration to bus drivers everywhere. And it says, we hereby salute you. Signed with highest regards, bus driver BD and Mo Willems, the author. So that's your certificate. We're not letting the pigeon drive the bus. All right. I don't know if you've seen how many books Mo Willems has written, but there's a whole ton that he's written. Those are some of the covers. Have you read a lot of his? Just one. This one? I'm going to try some different ones. They're pretty funny. And what grade are you in? Um, kindergarten. Kindergarten? Well, maybe you might like some of the... Um, well, this one's not a reader, but there are some like Elephant and Piggy that are in the readers. So, um, you know, for people who are just learning to read, they're good. Just they have short sentences and stuff like that. I bet you could read them yourself. All right, well, you are my only participant today, so you definitely win a prize. Would you like a stuffed animal? I have a dinosaur or a pink unicorn. Have you gotten one of those yet? Mm -hmm. Would you prefer the dinosaur if he's green or the pink unicorn? I saw the pink unicorn. They're pretty cute. A unicorn. <laughs> a unicorn. A unicorn, all right. All right, so you are paid, right? No. Natalie. Natalie. Sorry. All right. So Natalie gets a unicorn. It will be at the children's desk in just a little bit as soon as I take it out there. So thank you very much for coming on today. And hopefully our other people will do their packet. And I know some of them had baseball and stuff like that. And they were going to just do their packet. But thanks for being here with me today. So I wasn't all by myself, Natalie. <laughs> thanks for playing with with the naked mole rat and all that good stuff. <laughs> yes, well, thank you for everything right. you guys do at the library. I mean, yeah, we really welcome. appreciate it and we try to take advantage of all, all the programs. So we appreciate uh, you guys too. So thank you. Keep it up. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. All right. See bye. you.